G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. The Brisbane Lions have qualified for the 2023 AFL Grand Final. It's great to see we got the two best teams in the competition uh, doing battle in the Grand Final, which doesn't always happen. In fact, it probably is quite uncommon, actually. Of course, uh, earlier today, my time and yesterday for you guys, the Lions were too good for a fast start in Carlton, ran over the top of them and uh, flexed a bit of muscle to eventually run out winners. Now, I've been tending to do these uh, sort of reaction slash review videos uh, about these games straight after the fact, so they're out there on the internet as soon as possible. And uh, this time, it was more to do with me just wanting to really digest this result, really process it. And it has nothing to do, nothing to do with the fact that I got lit last night and I'm extremely hungover. It's not because of that. Grow up. But the lines were too good for the Blues. It was a uh, thrilling encounter, really, when you consider the start. Carlton were all over him, kicking the first five goals, I think it was, and then the Lions got one back before quarter time, and it was a real showcase of some maturity of this side, right? Because this is now an increasingly mature Brisbane Lions side that's uh, gone deep into finals a lot lately, at least to week two. They finished three times in the top four over the last four years. Last year, they finished six, but still made it to a prelim final, so they're battle-hardened. They start this game as well in front of their home crowd, uh, certainly a step off the pace and the Blues looked like they were going to run away for an upset. It was five center clearances to one in the first quarter, uh, 22 inside 50s to 11, and just a generally contested ball. Uh, the Blues were too good. But like I said, they showed maturity, they showed resilience, and it's obviously been a little bit of a patchy finals performance for this particular Lions side under Fagan, but this game, I think, is where they demonstrated the maturity to eventually flip the script on the Blues and obviously uh, run out winners in the end, and there were some really good performances, particularly by Coleman. 20 one touches seven score involvements. I think that's probably the best game he's played at AFL level. Josh Dunkley did a pretty good job on Paddy Cripps, kept him to 13 touches, although Cripps did kick two goals. And sure enough, the Lions continue to be incredibly hard to beat at the Gabba. Of course, in finals, they've been patchy even at the Gabba. They've played a lot of finals at the Gabba. But they go 13 from 13 this year, a perfect home season, and uh, I think that's 14 in a row for them as well. Firstly, just on the Blues, um, you know, commiserations for the loss, but it was a terrific season. I think most Blues fans, if not all, will be looking at this result and this this outcome, you know, loses in a prelim final to a very good side. As the, well, they'll be looking at it with a glass half full approach, you'd think. I think the biggest positive for Carlton is that, you know, throughout that form at the end of this season, sure, they uh, went on a hot streak, beat some really good teams. But I think for me, the most impressive part is your ability to stand up in finals. And we've seen that happen in all three finals that they've played. They were too good for Sydney in tense, hot footy environment. They did the same thing against the Demons, a more fancied side, more finals experienced side. That's for sure. Both of those teams, they've been. And to go to the Gabba in, uh, you know, a tough atmosphere and against a team that rarely loses at home and has all the experience in the world now, to do that, and get that fast start uh, to begin with, but also, you know, make a bit of a late charge as well, keep themselves in the game. I think there's a lot of, you know, I don't know if the word is integrity, but there's a lot of resilience and toughness about this Carlton side. And I do actually get vibes of that Melbourne 2018 side who finished fifth themselves and they beat Geelong and Hawthorne, I think, in the first two weeks. Obviously, things didn't go their way in the prelim, but this Carlton side ability to play against the top teams and match it with them and beat them and also show up in finals like atmospheres, I think there's a lot to take out of that. You do get the feeling though there's something brewing here at Carlton I feel like they could be on the verge of something special it's something I ident identified in the preseason just because of the mix of talent on the list but now they're actually demonstrating that they can play well as a team they're functioning probably just a few gaps to fill in their best 22 to be genuine contenders but they have the makings of a premiership list that's for sure so we'll see what happens and I guess the only other thing to touch on in this video uh, before you know grand final week is upon us it's my favorite time of the year there's gonna be lots of content on the channel but you know you just got to reflect on what an amazing job Chris Fagan's done and I'm I'm happy for both him and, you know, a number of Lions players as well that are finally getting to their first grand final. But, you know, because Brisbane's so, been so good under Fagan, we almost forget what a basket case they were. You know, that Michael Voss era flowing into the Justin Lepich era. Fagan took over from Lepich in 2017, I believe it was. You know, they couldn't hold on to their players. They were talking about how can we make it more appealing for players to go up, play up in Brisbane while they're struggling. We saw this really proud club just fall into an absolute hole. Fagan goes up there and he's one of the few coaches that hasn't played AFL before and sure enough two seasons down the bottom uh, as you can expect but in 2019 they finished top two and they've been contenders ever since and now that is all going to be validated with a grand final appearance. 
I guess the one thing that's held Fagan back and um, in this team in particular is obviously their performances in finals. They were three and six going into this year in terms of finals. Now that's kind of more even at five and six, but a uh, vast majority of those uh, finals that they've played in have been at the Gabba. Not to bang on about it, but I'm, what I'm really demonstrating is that there's been growth this year and you get the sense that even though this grand final is obviously going to be the MCG where the Lions are historically not strong, I've just got this feeling they're going to play well and I'm really looking forward to this grand final. I think it'll be a great game and it helps that they've got a great record against Collingwood too. But just some other points to sort of uh, underpin what a great job Fagan's done. We talked about uh, attracting players, retaining players was a huge problem for Brisbane. And under the Fagan era, whether it's directly attributed to him or just the organisation broadly, but they've attracted some non-Queensland-based players originally, like Lockie Neal, Josh Dunkley, Danaher's gone up there. Technically as well, they sort of recruited Beams and Cameron, but I think both of those were, they were they're both Queenslanders originally, sort of. Charlie Cameron's kind of from WA too, it's weird. But the, the fact that they're getting these high-level players that want to go play for Fagan at the Brisbane Lions in a non-footballing state, I think it's a real testament to how far this club has come in, uh, what, seven years? But anyway, guys, that is just my thoughts on the Lions making it through the last day in September. I can't wait. This is actually uh, an anniversary, obviously, of 2003, 20 years since then, where these two sides met in the grand final. First grand final. I ever watched was 2002 between these two sides as well so it's uh, it's nice to see them do battle again and uh, I'm sure Collingwood will hope that it doesn't go like those two previous grand finals but anyway guys let me know in the comments section what you thought of this game and your thoughts on the upcoming grand final of course we will be doing more grand final content as the game approaches in seven days from now can't wait hope you're doing well subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one cheers